We are back on the 1st of January for our Dover Athletics save. And to say that we've turned things around is an understatement. We've won probably our last seven games in a row. Okay, six games in a row, but we've actually gone undefeated in the league now. All the way back to this 17th of September. The reason why we've done so well, we've actually won six games in a row, five league games, one cup game. It's because we've gone to our trusty 4-2-4 formation that we played in last year's Football Manager game. And we basically won lots and lots of things. And it seems to work once again. It gets us goals. That's the main thing. We've kind of been struggling scoring goals throughout the season so far. The 44 has started to get us goals. And plus, it gives us two strikers. We very rarely play with two central strikers. Now we're going to be doing it. Even though we don't technically have transfer windows down in the Vanarama National League, we have signed a new player. It is Ricky Pilbro, who was available on a free transfer, got released from Leicester. I looked at him and went, he's pretty good. We've brought him in. He's only getting paid £50 a week. Probably going to loan him out to Gloucester or Concord. We've also loaned out Gary Ballard to Salisbury. This could be very helpful for young Gary. If he can get some game time, I don't think they're actually in a competitive league, but if he can get some game time there, that'll be very, very helpful for him and for us. So hopefully we get a better Gary Ballard when he returns. And because of our pretty successful December, we have found ourselves back up into fifth place in the table, back into the playoffs, but it is still very, very close. Arguably, Eastleigh down in 11th are the lowest team who are kind of in this little scrap a, dropped few, a few drop points could see a few other teams also getting involved all the way down to possibly filed. It's a very close league. We are, what are we, 12 points off the top of the table, so automatic promotion doesn't look like it's on the cards at the moment. Let's go forward and play our first game of the episode. Dagenham and Redbridge away from home. We're going with a 4-2-4. I'll expect us to lose this because, you know, we've won the last six. So the starting lineup for the Dagenham and Redbridge game then, it will be Ross Stewart in goal, Lewis Payne, Zach Orr, Leon Pambu and Silco Thomas at the back. Silco Thomas is now a three-star wingback, so a little bit of training for half a season. He's all of a sudden natural in that position. Zach Brown and Nathan Hosker in the middle of the pitch. Paul Searl is going to be a right winger. He's kind of moved his way further and further up the pitch. I originally started him as a defensive midfielder. He's now an inside forward on the right-hand side. Jordan McInef will be on the left-hand side. Rob Street and Jaden Williams will be our strikers. I've been waiting to play these two together for about a year and a half. I wasn't playing two strikers last season. This could be the time where we see Jaden Williams start scoring some goals for us. Five league wins in a row. Can we make it six? Dagenham and Redbridge are... Are they good? I don't think they're particularly great. 15th place in the table, so they are down the wrong end. Not really in a relegation scrap, not really in a promotion scrap either. Hosker with a free kick for us. Curling effort goes wide of the goalkeeper's post. Eight minutes on the clock. First chance goes our way. We still haven't won a game on camera, have we, this season? Although we've only played, I think this is our third episode of season four, isn't it? Ogi or Oggy, as the left back's going for a run down the left wing. Intercepted by Paul Sell, the youngster, to Zach Brown, back to Nathan Orr. Is Nathan Orr? Zach Orr? Who's Nathan Orr? Hosker, ball forward. Is he going to hit to Sell? He doesn't manage to do it. It's not the best pass from Hosker. And uh, we are hopefully going to pick that ball up. We do Zach Orr all the way back to Ross Stewart. Leon Pambu, the former Southampton man, finds Hosker. Forward once again, McAniff, Jaden Williams, the Spurs, a former Spurs man as well. Silco Thomas, the former Chelsea man, lots and lots of former Premier League youngsters. McAniff, the former Arsenal man, tries to find Rob Street and can't manage it. Thomas controls well, McAniff is there, and what a curling effort that is from Jordan McAniff. His 11th goal of the season, we have taken the lead against Dagenham and Redbridge. Now we just need to hold on. That goal as well has moved us up to fourth place in the table. Dagenham and Redbridge, though, do have themselves a chance of their own. Higgins to Metcalf. Down the right-hand side, intercepted by Silco Thomas. He's obviously, he's right-footed. He's not left-footed, but we're playing him on the left-hand side. Jaden Williams collects the ball. The striker plays it back to Hosker. We are looking very, very good at the moment. The 4-2-4 formation seems to work wonders. It's not the best chance, though. And it's lost, and Higgins is going to come forward. Metcalf, 15 minutes played. That is it. I feel like we should be nearing half-time. Jacobs has got in behind uh, Lewis Payne, I think it was. But it's not the best effort. Stewart holds on, kicks it long. Highlight ends and another one begins. Hosker finds Lewis Payne on the right-hand side. There's three, four maybe in the box. Searle crosses it in over everybody. Finds the goal scorer, McInef, though. He's crossed it in towards Searle at the back post. Searle's going to go for goal a few times. McInef's not going to get the rebound either. There might be something happening from this highlight. Hosker lumps it upfield. Payne isn't going to keep it in play. Nothing happens from that highlight. Another one begins. There's a lot going on. The 4-2-4 formation... Gets us highlights, doesn't it? Brown with it. 
Back to Zach Orr. Now Hoska again. Makinev with some space. Chests it down into the penalty area. Two in the box. Plays it back to Thomas. Across to Hoska. Hoska's effort is saved by O'Brien. It's going to be a corner. Still only 18 minutes played. We are looking very, very good at the moment. Hoska's going to take it then. Right-footed towards probably the back post. It is towards Jaden Williams. Pambu's there. Payne is there as well. Into the penalty area for the fullback. Is he going to cross it in? Doesn't cross it. Hoska does, though. Instead, it's a punch clear from the goalkeeper. And I, I want this highlight to end. There we go. Well, you can see from the change in formation and the just sheer quantity of highlights that we're having, it does seem to be making a bit of a difference, this new formation. The cross comes in from the corner. A header clear. Silco Thomas is going to collect, though. Back to the corner taker, please. Nope, gone the wrong way instead to Zach Brown. I feel like this is going to end up back at the goalkeeper. Hoska has the ball. Through ball. Finds Rob Street. Oh, my word. Goalkeeping. What was that? What was that goalkeeping? I don't care. Rob Street is there making it 2-0. 33 minutes on the clock. Rob Street has been on a very poor run of form as of late until we change formation. So he's starting to get his goals once again. And at half time, the Mekanef and Street goals mean it is 2-0 to Dover Athletic. I'm happy. Keep it going. I'm going to need to do a change though. Lewis Payne is going to come off. Ben Hennigan is going to come on because uh, Ben Hennigan, can, he can play as a right back. He's not the best right back. He's six foot four, doesn't really have a lot of pace, but he should be good enough to do a job. Obviously, Lewis Payne, you can tell from his fitness there, probably shouldn't have even played this match. Zach Orr with a free kick for us after just three minutes in the second half. McInef, Williams isn't going to get there, but McInef gets the uh, slided clearance. It's McInef down that left-hand side, three in the box, plays it to Thomas instead. Now Hosko, long-range chance from the Blackburn Loney, hits it just over the post. It's going to remain 2-0 early on in the second half. Well, my plan of playing Jaden Williams up front with Rob Street isn't really working out for, uh, for Williams, is it? He's on a 6.6. .6. Apparently, it looks like he's looking complacent. I think that's what that is. He is looking complacent. I'm going to give him a focus. See whether that makes a difference. I mean, of all people, you should not be looking complacent. You've been complaining about not playing football. We're starting to give you some chances, and you're playing awfully badly. Wild Bones' effort is awful as well. That goes over the bar. We got a bit lucky with that one. I mean, that face... Okay, the face has changed. He's looking a little less complacent. Jacobs' corner comes in. Riley's there, heads over the bar. 70 minutes played. I think we are going to do our final two changes. Paul Searle is... Uh, he's not having a good game as a right winger, is he? What do we do here? What what do we do here? We do that. We move McInef on to the right-hand side. Jack Spong comes on on the left-hand side. Williams as well is going to come off for Jack Langston. Into the final 15 minutes then. And Dagnum and Redbridge still coming forward. Leon Pambu steals it for us. It's not the most sensible clearance, was it? Just smashed it up the pitch. Over the top. Shapoke is in on goal. Shakpoke makes it 2-1. Uh, I think we are going to go cautious. For the final 15 minutes and uh, try and hold on. We've been the much better side here. Final few minutes of the game. It looks like we're going to hold on. Jack Langston's come on as well. Hasn't been very good. 6.4 but we have finally picked up our first three points on camera. Dagmar Redbridge arguably should have maybe got a draw out of that. But they didn't. We've got three more points. And those three points do see us move up to fourth place in the table. We do still have a game in hand over... Pretty much every team near us, apart from Barnet and Grimsby down in 9th and 10th. So if we win our game in hand, that will put us into 49 points. And we will be arguably closer to automatic promotion than outside of the playoffs, which is good. We are going to go forward to the second match of the episode, which is going to be at home against Gateshead. That is going to be a long old trip for the Gateshead away fans. We are hopefully going to pick up our seventh win in the row. In the row? On a row. In a row. Words. See you in a second. There's been a change of plan. We are not going to be playing the Gateshead match on camera because we've already just played it. We've beaten them 1-0. Dom Ballard with the only goal of the game. We did a fair amount of rotation in this one because of fitness concerns, basically. And the reason why we're not doing this one on camera is because up next, it's Solihull Moors. Top of the table, Solihull Moors. This can kind of prove if we are turning into a very good side and the 4-2-4 formation suddenly seems to work for us. And if it does work... We will hopefully be able to close the gap at least to Solihull Moors by three whole points. It's a six-pointer, isn't it? This is a six-pointer. So we're going to go forward to that. We've also done a little bit more transfer business, or hopefully we'll do by the time that match happens. So we'll return maybe with some transfers or straight into the starting eleven. So this is a problem of playing at the Vanarama National level. Uh, matches get postponed a lot. Um, yeah, the match against Solihull Moors has been postponed. So... We're going to go forward, I guess, to Bromley? 8th place Bromley? Sure, we'll do that one. We still... There might be more postponements, we don't know. We still might play the Solihull Moors game in this episode. 
we do get to play Bromley then, so we're sticking with the 4-2-4 formation. It's going to be Stewart in goal, Gary Davies as our right back. We'll come back to Gary in a minute. Zach Orr, Leon Pabu and Silco Thomas at the back. Paul Sell moves back to be a ball winner midfielder alongside Nathan Hosker. Don Ballard is going to be the right winger. Jordan McInef on the left. And then Rob Street and Dean Laird as our strikers. Dean Laird missed the last couple of games for injury. He's returned thanks to basically... I guess, postponements because of the old postponement. It means he's he's able to return. Uh, Gary Davies, uh, 19 years old, formerly of Chelsea. Um, lots of teams want to buy him for some reason. Derby County have recently put in a bid that we've rejected. He's getting annoyed with it. So if some of these big teams are legit coming in for him, they don't want to pay a lot of money, like £11,000. There's something here. There has to be something here for Gary. So we're going to try and get some football for Gary. Hopefully, we're going to see Gary improve quite drastically, and hopefully we can keep hold of the guy. We have also signed another right back, because I was worried that Gary was going to leave, and his name is Richard Elise, formerly of Chelsea, and in a very similar Silco Thomas mould. He's not really a right back, but we're going to train him up to be one. I've lost track of how many wins we've got in a row now in the league, but... This could be quite a record if we can win another game, particularly on camera, because we haven't really done that all season. Leon Pambu collects the ball, so we seem to be wearing our red away shirts today. Or to Hosker, across to Paul Searle, forward, finds Dean Laird. I'm hoping for a decent performance from both of our strikers. When we have two strikers, one plays well, one plays badly at the moment, and I'm not quite sure why. Gary Davies, back to Paul Searle, number seven. Very important squad number, in my opinion, for a very young footballer. Searle, back to all, all the way back to Ross Stewart, the former Motherwell, I think Motherwell goalkeeper. Silco Thomas, down the line, Jordan McInef, who's so far this season been one of our best players, gets it back to Thomas. The uh, former Arsenal and former Chelsea men combining. Thomas once again. McInef once again. Hosker once again. These three passing between them. Triangles. That's what they say in football, isn't it? It's all about the triangles. Hosker. Forward ball. It's controlled well by Rob Street. It is finished sublimely as well by Rob Street. Apparently that's the sixth goal of the season, although I'm pretty sure the last goal that he scored was the sixth as well. One problem of living right next to a main road is sometimes really loud motorbikes go past. So that goal moves us back up to fourth place in the table. Two games in hand, though, over Southend and Chesterfield. One over Solihull Moors. Obviously, one of our games in hand is going to be against Solihull Moors. So that's still a huge, huge match for us. So far here against Bromley, it's not really the most exciting game of football, but we do have that lead, and it's looking like it's going to be 1-0 at half-time. Dean Laird, Don Ballard, Jordan McInef all not playing very well at the moment. So you guys... Um, we're, do we're doing well. You can do better. I think. Keep going. Do we say keep going? We do. Just say keep going to it. Keep going to everybody. Come on, lads. You can do it. Davies' throw. 38 seconds into the second half. He's gone for a cross. It's fallen for Rob Street. And Rob Street pounces on the poor defending. Already in the second half, we've doubled our lead. It's been disallowed. Why is it disallowed? Why is it disallowed? No. Come on, referee. The line is flickering. That is... That's that should not be disallowed. If we had VAR in the Vanarama National, um, we'd have a lot of money, wouldn't we? So defensively, we look like we are playing really, really well. Silco Tomaso's just dropped to a 6.4 for some reason. I don't know what he's done to uh, deserve that. It's a header clear from Rob Street so far. Should have two goals to his name, but only got the one at the moment. Right with the ball. Van der Linden, Shipley goes for a first time shot. Just over Ross Stewart's bar remains at 1-0 after the hour mark. They are looking like the better side. They're having a lot more chances than us. Tracy, backwards to Clark, across Van der Linden, back to Clark again. If we can nick this, this might be a good chance for a counter-attack, because they do seem to have a very high line. It's all the way back to the goalkeeper, Bryn. He's kicked it long, but we've nicked this. We haven't nicked it. Rob, wake up. Rob Street, all you seem to be able to do is score goals. And I'd love you to add a little bit more to your game. Don Ballard with the ball, who's been, let's let's be honest, poor. Rob Street's got there. Ballard's assist for Rob Street is 2-0. Ballard's performance is going to go from a 6.2 to maybe a 6.9 in literally one move. A 6.7, apparently. That was enough to put him from a 6.2 to a 6.7. Right, we're going to do some changes. We're going to do that. So Laird is going to drop back to be a left winger. Langston's going to come on for Jordan McInef. Do we also do Thomas? No, we keep Silco Thomas on for the moment. The only way I can really bring him off is if we change our formation, and I don't really want to do that. Zach Orr was uh, challenging one of our own players to win that header. He did manage to do it, though. Shipley crosses it back post is Tracy, 
And uh, Silco Thomas has uh, just put the cherry on top of the icing for his game and has conceded a penalty after 70 minutes. Come on, Stuart. Come on, Ross. Do the business. Right steps up against Ross and uh, it's just underneath the goalkeeper. It is 2-1. Ollie Wright with the second goal of the season. Do we go cautious or do we try and find ourselves a third goal? One thing we do is we take Dean Laird off for Jack Spong. This is a worry. I don't have anyone who can play as a left back. They're saying Jack Wakeley. He is two-footed. I think we've got to do that, haven't we? We've got to do that because Silco Thomas is playing so badly. Wakeley's going to come on as that left back. That's all of our changes. We've done weirdly... We've had one of those games where some players have just been outstanding and some players have just been poor. We've got 10 minutes left to play to hold on to this lead. I think looking at those match stats, if we can win this game, this is the definition of FMing a team, isn't it? They've had 19 shots, 9 on target, an XG of 2.24, and we win with our 5 shots on target, an XG of a 0 0.61. We've FM'd a team, we've won 2 matches as well in one episode. We're up to, I think, 3rd place in the table as well. So far, this has been pretty good. So after that victory, that now makes it eight league wins in a row. It moves us up to third place in the table. 52 points on the board, two games in hand as well over Chesterfield. Hopefully, if we can win both of those games in hand, that will put us on to, what is that, uh, 58? 58 points. We'll be two points behind Chesterfield. We'll be four points behind Solihull Moors because one of the games in hand is against Solihull Moors. We've turned things around, everybody. We've actually managed to turn things around. Next episode, we are going to do the Solihull Moors game, and we're going to probably do someone a little bit further down, because that Solihull Moors... I mean, we've got nobody de decent, have we? Solihull Moors is literally just by themselves in the middle there. I don't really want to do a different episode just for that one. Although, we are playing Chesterfield in March, so we might have a very strange episode next episode. In fact, I might record the Solihull Moors match in about 20 minutes and then we'll play the Chesterfield one and I'll be wearing a different t-shirt. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like, hit the subscribe button as well if you're new to the channel. I will be back next time with more Dover Athletic and hopefully our promotion push to the Football League will continue and hopefully we're going to get closer and closer as we get towards the end of the season. We've also got youth intake coming in soon, which might happen in the next episode. Apparently it's good. It's not amazing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.